Good day, everybody. This is John Morrow. Welcome to Synergy, the podcast. Synergy, the podcast is a production of Toastmasters District 84, led by Toastmasters, soon to be retired from her role as public relations manager, Dr. Maria Martinez, distinguished Toastmaster. We're coming down to the windup of the year. I don't know just exactly when this episode is going to occur sometime in the month of June. I know that it will probably, if we're fortunate, occur before we have our year-end finale, which we just laid down and recorded the other day. And there are also some other events taking place, but already a new slate, a new team, a new group is together. But this group that is here for you today on this episode of Synergy of the Podcast will continue to be your podcast trio for the forthcoming Toastmasters year that starts July the 1st. And that's going to be myself, as podcast chair, Leslie Laporte and DJ Durante. And DJ and Leslie will really be carrying as much of a load as me because we're just going to run with ideas that we come up with ourselves and ideas that you bring to us. And there are always the surprises that come. And I do know that there's an individual lurking there in the background that may want to come on and join our team as well and give us a quattro, if you want to call it that, a foursome, a fearsome foursome. But for now, we'll just settle for the trio and also say right now in advance, welcome to Mike McLean, a past district director, our current webmaster, and now he is going to be our forthcoming 2022-23 public relations manager and Mike is very much on board with us and is giving us great ideas. But now let me get back to my two friends, my partners, the ladies that have helped this podcast to become more than just an occasional thing. We're pounding them out at one a week right now. Who knows what's going to come next? But please welcome both Leslie and DJ to the mic. And I will tell you this in review real quick. When DJ and I were last together, we recorded a podcast called A Moment in Time, A Moment in Time. And it was in conjunction, too, with the fact that the conference was coming up back in May. And that conference title was Time and Time Again. Well, time and time again, Toastmasters clubs run into roadblocks. DJ and I realized that one of the roadblocks that could possibly be overcome would be a change or a return to a series of best practices that can truly brighten up a club, brighten up its personality, brighten up its environment, brighten up its welcome mat, if you want to call it that, just creating an environment that people will want to come into. And once they're there, they'll not only see the educational benefits of it, but they'll want to become a part of it. They'll want to see in it that they can grow, develop those skills that are readily available in Toastmasters, but at the same time, be with great, great people. And so today, this is what we call a moment in time, part two. But part two today, we're going to go back to something that DJ and I talked about, but please understand, I'm not talking about it from the point that all you clubs out there should be doing these. Now, maybe we all should do this, but I think what we need to do is think of it less as a project for the club that we might be able to get some credit for. Think of it more as a way of the club establishing better practices for greater success. It's called Moments of Truth. It's been around a long time, mm -hmm. but it still has 36 of the most solid pieces of workable information available. We're not going to talk about all 36, but today, with the help of Leslie and DJ, we're going to talk about what is a good club climate. If you were a guest and you walked in for the first time to a place and you'd heard about this club and you knew that Toastmasters was a place where you could go to overcome your fear of public speaking, what would you be thinking you might run into when you come into a club? What's, what's a club that falls flat on its face. And what's an example of a club that the minute they walk in the door, they say, this is more than I ever imagined. Lastly, I'm going to point to you first because <laughs> I call you our resident stage director. <laughs> at the same time too, you just, you've been on this journey now for a while. So you know the things yep. that work and you know the things that don't work. Right. Well, 
Well, I mean, John, it's when I first walked into my club, oh my gosh, five years ago now, they were very welcoming. I mean, as soon as I hit that doorway, the first words out of someone's mouth was, hi, welcome. Glad of you, glad for you to join us. And I think honestly, from the get-go, that is one thing that some clubs miss out on is just the initial welcome. Being able to introduce somebody, especially if they're nervous and new, you want to be able to have that welcoming smile, even on Zoom. Sometimes if there are so many people in the Zoom, new people get lost in the shuffle. So that's one thing that you want to be mindful of. Sometimes new members pop in just to see what it's all about and they don't they come in unannounced you know because our our zoom links are available online so anybody can go to a specific club website and check the zoom link i know that my clubs the disney clubs all have their zoom links on every page like every club their sister clubs is what we like to call it so anybody can join any of the zoom links at any time without announcement so I think that's the first thing, is just be mindful of who's normally at the meetings. And if there's somebody new, be sure and recognize them right away. Because first impressions die hard. I don't care who you are or where you're from or what, you're, what organization you're with. It doesn't necessarily have to be Toastmasters. First impressions die hard. I know they do with me. So I think that's the first thing. First and foremost, a good, solid welcome, whether it be live or on Zoom. PJ, for you. The first now is the club that you're in the first club that you were ever in, or did you start with one club and then you found a different club? Well, John, great question. Uh, hello, everyone listening. I, you know, I love my club, it's been my only club. They were so welcoming. To, just to follow up on what Leslie said, that welcome really made me want to stay around a little longer and get to know more and more people and grow with them and, and build those bonds. And another thing that I would like to, um, for me personally, going back to the original question is energy. I need an energetic club yes. well, with energy that they like to have. We will have different topics every week when we meet at my weekly club. And we change our background when we're for the Zoom, we're sharing words or the words that we're using really want to include and create that atmosphere and that ambiance for that hour that we meet and that energy is what keeps me going every week and we actually just had a new member uh to sign up with us this week so i'm excited to talk about um the diversity the diversity <laughs> aspect which is important so if we talk about that in this episode i think that is another key crucial component this person is not only a male, it's a young male, and um, there's ethnicity there. And so there's just so many different new things that I'm excited to hear from this person as they grow and they become a part of our club and we can and welcome them and create an energetic learning, uh, self-developmental experience. Create an environment yeah. too that they feel safe in when they come in because if they're already intimidated by the idea of a club that focuses on people overcoming their speaking, whether it's an online okay. club, a hybrid club, or a live club, there's going to be a question in their mind. Are these people the kind of people that won't look down on me because maybe I, I stumble, I stutter, I don't know how to pick right. words right. right, I I, I wait because I can't think of a thing to say. Oh, yeah. Never mind the ahs and the ums and all the verbal faux pas that we're taught about that are called out in our meetings with odd counters <laughs> and whatnot and the grammarian job. So there has to be a sense that when you're there, that you can feel safe in being there and safe in making a mistake and knowing that in that particular environment, you're going to be shown how to better overcome those mistakes and be given tools to keep going forward in a positive manner. And that, of course, goes not just to evaluations but just to we're glad you're here you came to the right mm -hmm. place this is where you're going to have the chance to learn yep anybody yep. want to chime in about that because i think a lot of people they're afraid to so much as pipe up because they think these people are all so 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 far ahead of me i don't even know if i fit right right and that's actually a key thing is that making sure that the club is the right fit for you 
you know, because I mean, and when we inter when we welcome a new member into our club, at least when I was a uh, membership, I always told them shop around. We may not be the right club for you, but there are so many different clubs out there. Just join something, just join a club that's going to fit with your personality and with your style and schedule. I mean, that's important too. You have to remember that there are clubs all over, all over central, all over the central and northern Florida area. And even now with Zoom, you can travel across the world and join clubs that are around the world that might fit your schedule. So those are some things to keep in mind as well. You know, the culture of the club and whatever is best for you as an individual. I'll give you a scenario. You're both going to answer to it. And it's a true <laughs> scenario because I've observed it not once, but several times. Imagine a club which is totally virtual. And that club, you show up at the meeting. They know you're coming. They know you because you visited before. And you arrive about 15 minutes early and everybody is trying to figure out how to fill all the roles that are about to take place because nobody has responded to the emails. Nobody's reached out and signed up online. Nobody's contacted the Toastmaster. There may not even be a Toastmaster assigned. There's an educational vice president who's working to try to fill roles. And what you've got is all this chaos taking place before the gavel even goes down, if it goes down on time. And this is a common thing. I would come back and visit and they were still doing it. And I want to say to them, guys, this is not gonna work. <laughs> it just doesn't work. You're not prepared. Why can't you be prepared? What's the problem? What's wrong with the communication that you're supposed to have with each other? We are after all a quote, communications organization. Leslie, oh, DJ, Leslie talked last. DJ, I'm going to start with you. Okay. Right. Well, you're going to have to go back and give me a little follow-up because I had a little one walk in. <laughs> but <laughs> Love this. Love she it. has little ones. She has little ones scurrying around all the time. I do. I do. No, well, we are a communications club. So go, go. We're communications organization. So. Just give me a quick repeat of the question. Show up at an online meeting. You want to visit the club. You've already let them know you're coming. And you get there 15 minutes early. And all they're doing is they're trying to fill roles. It's always, oh, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? And there's no organization. It's chaos. And if they start on time, it's a miracle. And then once they start, everybody is not sure how to proceed because they came on at the last second. The organization is not there. Okay, so I think that this is really important because we are the uh, midday noontime club. We have to be timely. We need to be very punctual. So we take, um, as club members, we know our responsibilities is to check the agenda, make sure we know our role descriptions, make sure we're prepared to start timely. We open up the room and if we're short, which oftentimes, you know, we've been through our difficult moments where we've had very limited members present and we're doing multiple duties, multiple roles, and there's a sense of scramble at those times. But I think uh, clubs have to prepare for those ups and those downs. And if you're having too many of those downs, we have to fill in, find ways to um, get new members to join and understand that that's why we want more people to participate and open up. Now, I wanted to go back to something previously mentioned about this new member and getting them to get into the conversation, right? We want to ask them questions. Did you enjoy today's meeting? We would love to have you being specific and welcoming and letting them know that they are important as an individual. We want to know about them and that we all make mistakes and that we're just humans here all with these similar goals, uh, like the mission statement says, right? Development and building our confidence and our communication skills and leadership. So I think reiterating that really also adds to the importance of club health, uh, individual aut autonomy that we can bring, that we want to share with others, that we want to say, we want to know about who you are, and you can bring who you are to these clubs, 
and take on these roles and enjoy and have fun with it. And, you know, we'll make the best of it. But again, I think it's really important that we don't get stuck in the scramble and in those um, disorganized behavior patterns in our club and that we do address those as they need to be addressed timely. Agreed. Agreed. I think that it's the... It, while it's the responsibility of every all the officers in the club, uh, the secretary, at least in my club, is the one who sends out the agenda every week. And if she doesn't have enough roles filled the night two nights before, she will send out the agenda again and say, hey, guys, just a gentle reminder, let's sign up for some roles. So while it's everybody, it's everybody's responsibility to take your part, it's also someone taking taking control and taking that point of contact and being able to step up and say, hey, guys, we need to fill these roles. What if somebody comes in and we don't want to look bad? I can tell you right now, too, that if you go back to the history of Toastmasters before we had the technology that we have, and that's not just the virtual technology and the hybrid component, right. but also in the technology, we obviously now have free Toast Toast and we have for those who want to yep. use it, we've got uh, the other type of um, a device, I forget what it is now, but there, there's another mm. software that you can use, but Free Toast Host, that was where you could go and sign up. But in the day before we had Free Toast Host and it was something that was integral, we created our own agendas and we had a Toastmaster and we always reviewed who was gonna be on the rolls next. And then that Toastmaster, for example, would call all the speakers, mm -hmm. would call and contact the Table Topics Master and also speak to the General Evaluator because the General Evaluator was going to be the person who was going to be sure to set up the back table and get the evaluators equipped to go. And there was this communication. And before we had texting as a part of things, we had to pick up a phone and call people. And that wasn't <laughs> always a cell phone. That was a landline. Yep. Somehow or the other, we need to begin to nail down the idea that there are certain types of communication styles that people will respond to. I asked my area directors now, as I'm going to be a division director this forthcoming year, what's the best and most successful me way for me to get a message to you so I can get a response quickly? And they said, text, text us, <laughs> because we're, we're getting text all the time when we respond to text. Well, good, because now that I have texting and I know that they can communicate best with that, there's no reason for me to drop the ball, except if I don't text them and send them a message or let them know what's coming, you don't assume. Now, that having been said, Telling people, please go out there and sign up is one thing, but sometimes people just don't get around to it. And that's not because they're lazy, it's because they're all busy. We're all are busy. We're kind of like they used to say up to our eyeballs and crocodiles. But at the end of the day, what you have to do is figure out as you're getting close to a meeting, pick up a phone, call somebody, send a text. I don't think email is working that much anymore, but I like email. But at the same time, if you can't get them by text, make the phone call, leave the message, get a message on their voicemail. Just do everything you can to tell them, hey, I need to hear from you. And I'm beginning to see that it does work because if you're the Toastmaster of a meeting and you're talking to the people before the meeting, and I'm not talking about an hour before the meeting, I'm talking about days before the meeting, they're going to take the trouble not only to let you know that they'll sign up and participate, but they'll also take the trouble to let you know if they run into a problem. Mm -hmm. And I see that happening. But we still have to get back to those best practices of how are we going to communicate? If we're a communications organization, we should show up prepared. But at the same time, as we say in our promise as Toastmasters, we come prepared if necessary to fill a role at the last minute because of an unexpected vacancy, because we always come ready to serve. And I've had people tell me, no, I can't do that. And even yesterday in a meeting, I heard a Toastmaster say, I was supposed to evaluate so-and-so not so-and-so. And I thought, well, wait a minute. If you listen to so-and-so, you could still evaluate so-and-so, even though you weren't <laughs> supposed to evaluate them. Weren't you listening? But I didn't say that, but that's uh -huh. the thing that runs through my mind. Right. You can what have more than one evaluator. It's not, there's nothing against that for sure. I think this makes me think of flexibility. We need to be flexible. We yes. need to be open. Agreed. Agreed. Because that's what's going to allow the space for people to feel comfortable to continue yep. to come back and continue to make it a positive experience and atmosphere. And then we can welcome others, right? We can bring a friend. We can invite somebody. 
because no one wants to invite anybody to a negative, you know, party pooping place. <laughs> you know, <nobody. laughs> so exactly. If, if you're constantly creating an exciting learning environment with positivity, uh-huh. sticking to the fundamentals, of course, of Toastmasters, right. it will really help, right? And morale, maintaining the morale. It's so yes. important. Each team member, not just officers, right. not right. just... Um, but all of that, I think, does go back to the moments of truth and those practices that we need to be constantly mindful of, right. to ensure um, healthy club growth, personal development, again, going back to those things that I find fundamental in my Toastmasters journey. And I, I would like to assume others also, that's important to them, that makes them want to continue to come back and continue to contribute to this organization. Right. There's a thing, there's a thing, Leslie, before, and I'll let you comment on this. Uh There was, there is a thing in radio years ago when I was in broadcasting, we had a great program director and we had a specific genre of music that we played and the program director received literally dozens and dozens of records. This is back when we were spending vinyl. So a lot of stuff came out on 45 RPMs. Uh He could listen to the first 15 seconds of a record and tell you if it was going to be a hit or a miss. And we find the same thing is true whenever you're looking, let's say, for example, to uh, latch on to a podcast. It isn't just enough that you grab them with a good visual uh, item there that they can see. Look at the podcast, look at the title, look at the hook in the title and think to yourself as you read the show notes. This might be something I want to examine. Once you actually click through and open up the podcast and start listening to it, if you don't have something in the first 15 seconds or so, or in the first 15 to 30 seconds, guess what? People are going to tune it out. They're going to go look for a different podcast. It's true with a lot of things. And I think with the Toastmasters Club, although it's not seconds, I think the first few minutes of a meeting and how it is, how you're greeted, how it is called to order and how it begins are the difference between people connecting and people saying, this is an utter waste of my time. Yep. I have to agree with that. It it really is critical. Again, first, it goes back to saying first impressions. If you cannot provide a good first impression for a new potential member, that sometimes can make or break whether or not they become a member of your specific club. It really makes a difference. The other thing, in addition to be making a good impression and, you know, following your moments of truth is that the, just the, for not, not just for your new members, but for your ongoing or your consistent members, because every club has members that are always there every meeting, no matter what, you've got to make sure that those members are happy too, because happy members will be more inclined to recruit their friends. Absolutely correct. And then we take it a step further. We have done our due diligence and created a great, well-planned meeting. The roles are filled. We call it to order. We are confident going forward. We are warm and welcoming. We are, in a sense, have a strong order. We could even engage in Robert's rules of orders and make sure that we respect each other's time and everything regarding that. And yet at the same time, be able to have a meeting that can be memorable so that when the meeting arrives at the close and we ask for feedback from our guests, and I hope more clubs will do this because that feedback, if you listen to it with intentionality, can be extraordinarily valuable. But Mm -hmm. if that's a positive feedback experience and they're not just saying it to be nice, you know, it's a great time, but they actually say, I think I'd like to come back and learn more about this. Then it's our duty. It's incumbent upon us at the end of the meeting to talk to them further, invite them to join, but also to get the necessary information and invite them back and follow up with them. It's not harass them. I tell people, we don't want your email or your phone number so we can basically telemarket crazy you. It's it's just us wanting to reach out to you to let you know we have a forthcoming meeting. This is going to be our theme. We got a featured speaker. We've got a special line of questions in the theme that you're going to enjoy. And we want you to know you can come back. And even if you haven't made your decision to join, please know we adore guests. We adore guests. We welcome guests. We can't wait to have guests. And that, Oh, sorry. That no, brings ahead, up a ahead. question that I yeah. have. Speaking of follow-up, 
even with current members, how much follow-up is too much? Because I know that's that's one of the questions that the MOT, the Moments of Truth, um, asks. You know, how much is too much? DJ, got an idea? Ooh, I, I you know, I, I've only played one role, limited roles in my club. I don't think I've been, I haven't done the membership role. I haven't done education. I haven't done secretary. Now, to me, it seems like those roles would have a better response to this question. I know I do public relations. So in the sense, I think that from the external point of view, it's important to make sure that we have that internally and then push it out externally so people see it and feel it. Okay. But um, I think it's important to be considerate of each other's times. And I like, what is it? Rules, Robert's rules of, of order. Of order. We've been talking about that actually in our club lately. So that really does ring a bell. It really does hit home as something that I, obviously it seems like clubs are talking about. So <laughs> it's good. <laughs> great way for a pattern to be set that is very organized and it creates an optimal meeting but at the same time it does allow for the opportunity to let people know that there's a mechanism for follow-up and maybe that's where we need to go back to best practices instead of just getting the information let people know as a practice in our club the way that we follow up with you is that we will reach out and send you an email expressing our appreciation or send you a text expressing our appreciation that you visited with us. And we will be glad to let you know when the next meeting is scheduled and we formally invite you to come and visit with us again, as well as we hope to someday, sooner rather than later, you to become a member of our organization if you see that it fits with your schedule, your time, and your responsibilities. Because sometimes too, we have to be willing to say to an individual, if our time is not really suitable for what you're trying to accomplish, let me share with you some other Toastmasters clubs in the days that they meet. And these are clubs in the area. And what we do is we're always talking of Toastmasters and not just trying to hoard and protect ourselves right. to keep the people within our club. Because the truth is we should be talking up one another as well, but for too much, I don't have a clue. What I know is that based upon what I'm seeing currently in the environment that we're in, because of COVID and other things, I don't think there's nearly the follow-up that's necessary to even let these people know that we're acknowledging that they came to begin with. Mm. Good point. It's I very think quiet. Follow -up is, I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to say I do think follow-up is important because it gives them opportunities to have information and okay. chew on it. Like the <laughs> idea of chewing on it. Yeah. <laughs> it gives them op and um, maybe follow up can be too much, but I don't think, and I like, I think this was really resonated with what was just said. Uh -huh. there really, I guess there really isn't too much in the times that we're living in. Okay. I think that's fair. people need each other now. I think people need to feel more welcomed more than ever. They want to know. I, I hate to see use the word chase, but people don't have a, I, I've found in my work, people, there's a lack of feeling of belongingness. And if we can create a feeling of belongingness, it really guides. So I think in the welcoming, in the follow up, there's opportunity for that. Okay. Now, I want everybody listening, and Leslie, I know you're agreeing. I can tell just from the sound in your voice. There is a key piece of something that we need to dial in tight on. This is the age that we live in. People want a place where they feel welcome, and it goes to the same thing of feeling safe, a feeling that here, I'm with people that have my back. I'm with people that are glad that I'm here. I'm with people that don't put any expectations on me except the belief that I possess the ability to be the best version of me I can possibly be. To me, that is the quintessential flow of power through the idea of inclusiveness, acceptance, and diversity without any conditions attached to it. 
this is when I think we fulfill the mission of Toastmasters, but especially the mission of the club. And I really believe in reading the mission statement of the club at the beginning of a meeting and not just reading it, you know, from a script. The mission of the club is to provide a supportive and educational environment that fosters communications and leadership skills, therefore fostering self-confidence and better personal growth and that sort of thing. To me, it's about the fact that we are a safe, supportive, nurturing educational organization. We help you find your self-confidence. Dennis Woolridge said this to me three years ago. He said, the greatest thing that Toastmasters gave me was self-confidence. Amen. For sure, 100%. There's things in the business of a club, and I really think that we could talk in varying episodes about best practices, but this entire conversation that we're having today seems to talk about the beginning. What are people experiencing yep. the moment they either come online and they're in the Zoom room, mm -hmm. or they are coming into a physical facility where there are people mingling and about the business of getting a meeting ready. What are they greeted with? Exactly. How are they welcomed? And we've got to begin to realize that best practices begins with how we engage the guest. Mm -hmm. You know, John, now that, I'm, now that we're talking about it, it, this might actually be a good series for this year talking about each individual aspect of the moments of truth. I mean, we've already talked about question number one. I mean, we've really gotten into the nitty gritty of question number one. Might be something to think about for us. With you, And I know that we were talking and we'll be modifying and updating the spreadsheet, which by the way, was the brainchild of DJ and DJ is our spreadsheet maven. But nonetheless, <laughs> The idea of us being able to weave this into the subjects which are pertinent to Toastmasters, I think is also important to people listening who are not yet Toastmasters, but they may pick up this podcast on Google Podcast or through the iTunes store. Uh -huh. And they're hearing Toastmasters talking about how a club climate is so important for an individual to feel safe, to feel welcome, to feel comfortable, and to feel like if they do align themselves with this organization, they have a chance to not only overcome that fear of public speaking, which seems to be the biggest thing that people talk about when they come to a Toastmasters meeting is that I have a real problem with public speaking. And yet Toastmasters is so much more than just public speaking. But before we can ever even start working on their self-confidence, as Dennis Woolridge calls it, we have to get them to where they feel comfortable enough to be with us, where they feel like they're safe and protected exactly. and supported. So yeah, I think the series building it and building it on the blocks that it was created for starting with first impressions is a great idea. So I think we need here and we'll resolve here as we are going to be uh, the threesome that's going to be a part of the 2022-23 year and those podcasts will begin in the month of July. We need to be sure that we visit this subject on a frequent basis mm -hmm. and have some form of systematic regularity to it. Our schedules are all crazy, but we know those of you that are listening, you could be listening in the late night, in the middle of the night, uh, you're up in working, or you could be driving in your car on a trip up and down the highway. You could also be listening to it by having gone to the D84 website and pulled up the podcast and said, that looks like an interesting subject. I think I'll listen to that. But the point is, we're here and we're here for the purposes, not just to help our fellow Toastmasters, achieve and exceed expectations and thrive in new expectations and new trials and events. But we also want to make sure that there are people out there that know that this is an organization that is wide open for anyone who wants to develop communications and leadership skills while at the same time being in a place that is safe, supported, friendly, nurturing, and helpful. And frankly, great people to be great friends with because once you get the bug, you'll be like me and you'll be a toastaholic. And then there's just no help for me. There is not a single physician that I know of in the world that can cure me of this disease. Not that I really want to be cured. I don't, I don't. Any other final comments here because we are winding up our session today and we've had a lot of fun. And I wanted to be sure that my two partners are able to share some final thoughts as we go forward. 
I'll start with DJ Durante first. DJ, I know you got a little one scurrying around, but I will have you take this opportunity for some final comments on today's episode. Yes, thank you so much. Been a wonderful conversation. I really enjoyed digging deep into these moments of truth, talking about our own club practices, overall general club, best club practices. And like I said, you said at the beginning, workable uh, techniques and things we can be doing, we can take back. Each and every listener can take back to their club and say, hey, I didn't know, you know, that we could maybe try something like that. Leaving each other ideas. But I think going back to the welcoming, the energetic ambiance of Toastmasters that kept me coming back over and over again. And John, I love that you said a Toastaholic. That's, that's clever. Clever, my friend. And uh, really enjoyable. Just I think we have, an, as a leadership organization, we have um, responsibilities to fulfill, and that really goes passed down to our guests and potential new members. And I think I wanted to add that to the last final points of this conversation, but really fulfilling our roles to the best of our ability to maintain the morale in the club. Thank you. Well said, Leslie. Agreed. 100% DJ. Also, one other thing that I was thinking about is that not only can it help our own clubs and our own individual progress, but these are practices that we can take to the outside world. And that's what makes them so vital is that these practices that we're talking about and will be talking about are things that you can use in your everyday lives, not just for for Toastmasters, but for your businesses, your work, and even in your personal lives, in, in family, family meetings, you know, there's definitely something to be said about the things that we learn as Toastmasters that can be applied to the rest of our lives. So those are my final thoughts. I agree with you completely because Toastmasters can, as I've said before, Toastmasters in fact has played the role in my life of helping me to be a better person, the person that I am today. And that certainly has been nothing but positive experiences. And that goes along with other great things that have happened. So it's in my top three of the things that mean the most to me on this, uh, in this life I've lived. I wanted to let everybody know that is listening to this podcast, regardless of whether you're listening on the District 84 website or whether you're listening by way of Google Podcast or the iTunes store, these productions are available. You can pull them up at any time that you want to. If you happen to have a Wi-Fi Bluetooth in your car like I do, I enjoyed a trip recently where I had to drive to North Georgia to be with family, and I pulled up Google Podcast and I listened to every episode that was on the Toastmasters District D84 website at the time, and it was really enjoyable to look at all of the great things that we have talked about during the course of this past fiscal year, beginning back in July of 2021 and wrapping up at the end of the month of June here in 2022. We will continue to do so, so I want to invite those of you listening who have discovered us for the first time that this is your place to find these podcasts, but if you want to learn more about Toastmasters and you have thought about this organization, perhaps go to the ToastmastersD84.org website. That's ToastmastersD84.org. At the website there, you don't have to log in or anything. It's an open website. You can find out information about the district, about the clubs, about the various trainings and opportunities, and you can find links to the Toastmasters International website to find a club and know where clubs at in your particular area. So please find a club reach out to them. There should be a telephone number or an email where you can contact them. And hopefully someone will respond to you. And we'll talk about that in another future episode as well, responding to inquiries by way of Toastmasters email. But the thing is, is to remember that this podcast is a regular part of the District 84 Synergy program. Synergy is our newsletter. Synergy, the podcast is our podcast. And other things are coming forth, including a YouTube channel. You may very well see us and other people appearing not just in podcasts, but these podcasts will become live and streaming on YouTube video, both live and also recorded in the archives. There are great things coming. Much, much more excitement is ahead, and we want you to be a part of that. 
And whether you visit a club or whether you just join us here online, we want you to come back and see us again. We will be wrapping up the year, the last week of June, with a finale series. We hope you're able to catch it. In the meantime, I'll let you know that Synergy, the podcast, is a production of Toastmasters District 84. We cover the broad part of Central Florida, Sands, the Tampa Bay area, of course, and all the way up to Jacksonville and across to Tallahassee. We are North Florida and Central Florida's communications and leadership leader. We are the arm of Toastmasters for this part of the country, and we do things well. And we also want you to know that it is the public relations manager, Dr. Maria Martinez, who has made this podcast possible. It's been a great year, and it was Maria who was instrumental in helping me find these two incredible ladies who partner with me. I may be the chair, but I'll tell you one thing right now. As far as I'm concerned, I'm surrounded by two ladies that can take this ball and run with it better than anybody. So I'm thrilled to death to have them as my teammates. And really, we're, we're a trio. And I hopefully, if we are able to find another person who has expressed an interest in joining us, it would be great to bring on yet a fourth member. Because the thing is, as we always said, there's plenty to talk about. The question is, what value can we bring to you? And that's our goal is to bring you the best possible value that you can get, whether you're a Toastmaster or whether you're thinking about becoming one. Until next time, this is John Morrow on behalf of Leslie of the 40 and DJ Durante saying thank you so very, very much for listening to Synergy, the podcast. Until our next gathering around the corner, take care and have a great day, a great evening, a great week, a great month. Just have the best time of your life right now. Bye-bye. So long.